Welcome to Abbey Clubhouse, where we review the Bandai High Grade 172 Armored Special Carrier from Our Main Warrior at the Border, which we've already briefly seen in Episode 3, transporting the Kenbu and the Jogen to the temporary base, and then never again after. Still, the kit is exciting to a lot of people because Bandai really doesn't release these peripheral vehicles that much nowadays, and it's exceedingly rare that we get supporting kits like this that expand the context of a series. Getting right down to business, the Armored Special Carrier or ASC was released on November 13, 2021 and it sold for a price of 3,300 yen. So it is the first Kyokai Senki kit to go above that baseline price of 2,640 yen. The box art is illustrated by Kazuya Igarashi from Planeta, and with the releases so far, it's pretty safe to say that the Planeta artist will be handling all the illustrations for the entire line. The box is bigger than the other kits so far, measuring 31 by 20 by 11 centimeters, and you really will notice that thicker box. The short side of the box surprisingly doesn't assign this kit a number, and I don't really see why, so I guess all the vehicles are considered special releases. The other side of the box has exactly the same information. The long side of the box has all the studio shots to show off the truck you'll get inside, and then the other side plugs the other kits released so far and tells you to go watch the show, and then it's all legal text. Inside the box, we get the ASC spare across 6 runners with a lot of gigantic pieces. You also get a claw that gets installed onto the Kenbu which comes on these two small runners, so they can actually be bundled with another kit if Bandai wants to do that sometime in the future. The trailer parts of the truck are actually separated off with gates and all of it can be molded separately if Bandai wants to do it at some point. But right now, I don't think Bandai will actually sell the trailer apart by itself, but they've certainly left that option open in the way the runners are configured, uh, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. You get a sheet of foil stickers with these colorful ones here for the headlight unit at the front. And then this long silver sticker for the section underneath the armor plating at the front. The short red ones here are for the brake lights on the trailer. And the long ones here are for the brake lights on the cab. The short orange ones are for the turn signals on the back here. These arrow shaped ones wrap around these triangular lights here. For the instructions, we get the info on the truck itself on the front. And on the back, we have most of the same photos as we got on the box along with some extra info on each of the parts. Three more color pages are on the inside for assembly instructions. And then the black and white side is all for assembly instructions, as you'd expect. After about 90 minutes, we have the ASC all put together, and as you'd expect, it's not a terribly complicated kit other than the pieces being kinda large. The futuristic truck immediately calls to mind the Tesla Semi, though I'm sure Ken Okuyama design is more than capable of designing great futuristic looking vehicles without needing to copy Tesla, so this truck looks good for a very good reason. On the surface, it might seem like the truck is black and that's it, but if we look closer, there's actually a lighter gray for the main color, with the black being the complementary color, like on the roof. It's not very obvious from the photos, but it is much more obvious when the real kit is in your hands, and the color breaks up the contours that are otherwise kept quite simple, with long arching lines to keep the outline very sleek and very beautiful. The windshield is clear blue, which at first glance seems kind of nice, but if you think about it, windshields aren't supposed to be tinted blue. It kind of sucks that now we're stuck with this tinted glass. The same goes with the headlight units, which even make less sense in clear blue. Car model builders will know that these should just be in clear plastic and end of sentence. To be fair, straight building it out of the box, the clear blue does look nicer and it gives the truck more character, so it's not entirely without reason even if it doesn't make sense in real life. And while we're belly aching about the clear plastic, this part here is actually a blast shield that you can move up to protect the people inside the cabin, which is really cool. But in time, this will scratch up the windshield quite a bit and that's unavoidable sadly. And while we have your shield up, there is this little section exposed on the bottom which looks really nice in the same clear blue plastic. But this is something you're actually supposed to cover up with this silver sticker, which is a bit of a bummer. It looks quite good as it is like this actually. And in a very Lego sort of move, the black part on the roof can actually be taken off for you to see inside the cabin. And it really is quite detailed in here, with three seats here up front with a dashboard big enough for some kind of starship. And then two sets of stairs run off the sides, with one leading to the door on the side right here, and then the other one which leads to the door on the back, so the entire layout is quite sensible. In the middle here, we have seats for more people, and you gain access to this entire space through the door at the front here. 
This is all stuff they really didn't have to do and people might not even notice it's here at all. But it's clear the designers were quite proud of what they made here. But there is a small problem. Or maybe I should say a big problem because this thing is huge if you think about the seats and all that space on the inside. This thing would take up something like two entire traffic lanes which the design of the truck really doesn't tell you from the outside at all. Any animation makes sure you never see the people in a wide shot with it. So this tells me this truck started out as a normal sized vehicle which then was just later hit with an enlarging ray. As a result, this truck probably can't be driven on public roadways and this is why the animation had to make up that strange excuse where it was driven down some abandoned tunnel. It sours the model kit a little bit, especially with how nice it looks, but it really doesn't look right at all once you realize that it is about twice as big as it looks on the outside. But back to the praises, the truck is fully detailed even on the underside with the space here fully enclosed with an underside panel which looks like it's all armor plated here. There are suggestions of suspension systems and we have a working steering rack so the front wheels can turn together. All around the cab you're not going to find a single seam with maybe this one here at the top that's still disguised as a trench. Every connecting surface is matched to the natural construction of the truck so this is top notch stuff with how clean it looks. The wheels are possibly a weaker part on this model, now they don't look bad. They're sculpted wonderfully with the heavy duty tires wrapping around the wheels with all its hollowed out spaces around the spokes. The problem is that the wheels have to be made in the same plastic so your eyes will immediately pick up on that plastic texture and it really does kind of break the illusion. It really only applies to the front wheels because all the other wheels actually have a hood over the entire wheel well because in the future that's how all cars must be apparently. It's best to paint the tires matte black if you can, but if that's not possible, it's best to go find yourself some 800 grit sandpaper and rough up the tires a little bit to alter the texture and then the tires will be much better separated from the rest of the truck. Next up is the trailer and surely you've noticed by now that we only get one of these in the box even though we see a photo of two of them linked together. So elephant in the room, all we get is this connector piece that lets you link another trailer to this one. To get the trailer, you guessed it, you need to buy another one of these kits which you'll then end up with an extra cab and where are you gonna do that one? It's a logistical mess, I mean what the hell Bandai? Uh, but of course Bandai wants you to buy two of these kits if you can, I mean of course they love that. But otherwise the trailer looks as good as the cab, with the bed of the trailer lined with all the steel grating looking like it's really ready to handle tough loads. The insides of the walls also show how they're reinforced and usually Bandai is perfectly happy leaving these inner surfaces completely blank. Now there is a small price to pay for all these inner details where from the outer side we can see a very minute amount of shrinkage. It's not enough for you to feel with your hands but sadly it is enough to create a faint shadow of all the details on the other side and you do get this consistently with all the side walls. The bottom is once again beautifully enclosed with no ugly hollow spaces. The wheels are the same as the ones on the cab with an axle between them so they spin in unison. At the front here there is a door which we saw in episode 3 where Amo was talking to Gashin while they're standing in the trailer here. It's meant to work with the back door on the cab which at first sight seems sensible but it feels like if the truck happens to be turning then you're gonna get killed rather easily. The trailer's major gimmick are the sidewalls here that can fold down at the top to unlock them. And then the entire wall moves out a little bit and drops all the way down to the bottom for loading and unloading the trailer. You can do this from both sides which again isn't something Bandai had to do but they did put it in anyway. The walls lock down tight when they're closed and they won't rattle or wobble even though they look like they really would. Simple as this truck seems, there is a lot of care put into it to really make it a good kit for you to enjoy. Of course the trailer is meant to transport mailers units so here they are in their storage modes. The Kenbu fits without any fuss at all with a tiny bit of room to spare around it. If we look from the side, parts of the Kenbu like the chest sticks up way past the sidewall so the truck doesn't actually completely obscure the load. The Jogun almost fits in but the shoulders are just a bit too wide so you need to cheat a little bit and take off the yellow panels on the sides of the shoulders here and then they'll fit which is less than ideal. For the Byakshi, even though it's not shown to ever work with the ASC, it actually fits just fine. Now in episode 3, we get the shot here of the Kenbu and the Jogun together in the trailer. And sadly, we can't actually do this because they won't both fit into the real trailer if they're kneeling. 
if you really must put them both in, they do fit if they're crouching like this, which isn't exactly the same as in the animation, but it does actually work in practice. Now one big problem with the truck is, while the entire Malus unit can be transported quite well, there's no space for the weapons unless you get that extra trailer just for that, and if you're like me, that's the kind of logistical inefficiency that's going to keep you up at night. It has space for the robot, but no extra space for any of the weapons, so how are we going to use this in practice? Besides the truck itself, we do get a bonus weapon made for the Kenbu that we saw earlier, the superheated vibrating combat claws which was seen in use finally in episode 10 of the animation. At first glance it looks like it goes onto the Kenbu directly like the small shield that it comes with, but actually there are two holes on the side here so it actually outright replaces the entire forearm. It's not a complicated process and you just take off the original lower arm, and then you plug it in back in place with the two holes and there you have it, the claws now installed. The shape of the unit is matched to the Kenbu, though it does fit onto the other Malus units as well, like the Bakchi, even though the white is not exactly the same tone. And on the Jogan, it looks like a field repair done with spare parts, but in the Jogan's case it actually doesn't quite work because the back right here actually hits the shoulder, so this part sadly isn't quite universal. The blades themselves flip forward too exactly as you'd expect and they're quite long. The tips are a little bit round so you're going to want to sharpen them if you're a builder. And another small shame are these hollow spaces on the inner side here, especially when hollow spaces are otherwise so incredibly rare in any kit in the line. There are two more hollow spaces on the base of the claws here too. The claw is symmetrical so you can fit this onto the right arm as well if you want and the weapons will still work exactly the same as before so you can keep this as a permanent form of an upgrade if you like. It's a nice little bonus to get on top of the vehicle itself. For size comparisons, here's the ASC once more with the Kenbu. The Kenbu stands quite a bit taller than the truck, not that it's surprising or anything. And here's the lower end benchmark, the entry grade RX-78. And here's the upper end benchmark, the high grade new Gundam. As always, this is just to give you an idea of what this truck would look like on a display with your other 1144 kits. I know the question you immediately have is, can I use this with my Gundam models? And the answer is yes in principle. The EGRX-78 fits onto the bed of the truck rather nicely as you can see here. Problem is, if the truck was already twice as big as it should be in 172 scale, now we've jumped to it being 4 times too big. The cab and its cabin would be comically large and it's gonna look more like a mobile command center than anything like a truck. And the scale is just all wrong like this and it's not gonna make any sense. So, you know, TLDR, you can do it if this is really what you want. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the Bandai High Grade 172 Armored Special Carrier. Number one, it enriches the model kit line. So this point is rather obvious, we don't get a lot of vehicles nowadays in any shape or form, and the most recent prominent examples are the HUC Dodai Kai, the Base Jabber, the Other Base Jabber, and the Other Other Base Jabber. Support vehicles like this gives us so much more context to the usage and the deployment of all the cool technology that we see on the robots themselves, and they give us views into the world beyond just more ways to fight and shoot at each other. So it's not surprising that this truck has been selling really well and a lot of people are curious about this kit. And number 2, it has top class quality. There's simply no question about the high quality of this kit, from the steering rack that they make sure you can admire at any time you like, to the fully enclosed undersides with all the machinery and armor plating, to the detailed layout of the cabin. It's really hard to find any corners they cut or any sloppy design. There are no seams and there's not even an angle from which this truck doesn't look really slick or really robust. And those side doors and how firm they lock, that's just perfection. Chef kiss. Mwah. This is what Bandai looks like when they really put in their best effort and you're just gonna love this kit. Uh, but number 3, it's strangely scaled. All that quality we talked about gets really sour to no end when you realize this thing is just scaled up to be twice as big as it was originally meant to be. It's gonna bother you forever once you know it, and this thing is gonna take up two traffic lanes and the drivers did something like 3 meters off the ground. No joke, the roof of this car is 5 meters off the ground. To give you an idea of how gigantic this is, 
the real world equivalent is the DAC120BE haul truck that's used for mining, which is also 5 meters tall. I mean, look at this. I mean, for God's sake, the windshield here on ASC is actually as tall as a full grown adult. So while the ASC looks like a regular semi and it sells itself as a regular truck, I can't let Bandai off for intentionally hiding this problem. Don't believe me? If you've ever watched the show, have you ever seen any photo inside of the cabin of the car? Or have you seen any shots of the people in a wide shot together with it? Strange, right? There just aren't any in the show or on the box. So that's a review of the ASC, a wonderful kit that's everything you'd hope it to be until you realize Bandai's this big lie that ruins the design of the truck. It's still kind of worth the purchase anyway because a vehicle like this is just too rare and interesting to pass up. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects, links in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos, like the review for the Mayless Jogun. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hockey Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.